Are you considering upgrading from your WiseCam version 3, or are you looking for a WiseCam that has 2K resolution? Either way, you're in the right place. Hello, I'm Wanderer001, and this is my review of the WiseCam Pro camera. This is Wise's first 2K camera offering. I have done several over there in the corner, WiseCam reviews and other products, so I'm fairly familiar with the brand. You get good quality for a low price with Wise, but the camera is not the only thing that you get in the box, so let's quickly talk about the peripherals that you get with this before we start talking about the camera. First off, we have its mounting hardware. We have a metallic base because, as we'll see later, the base of the Wise Cam is magnetic. We also have some 3M tape if we wanted to stick this somewhere, as well as mounting screws and anchors. The other thing that we get with, with the Wise Cam Pro is a just shy of six foot flat cable and wall wart, as well as what I'm going to call a proprietary micro USB cable, and we're gonna discuss that momentarily. Bringing the WiseCam Pro back into focus here, you are looking at a very small footprint. It is very similar in shape and size to the WiseCam version three in that it is 2.05 inches long with a width of 2.05 and a depth of 2.3. It is also only 4.23 ounces in weight. So it is a very small, versatile little camera. Now there are some major differences between the Wise Cam Pro and the Wise Cam version three. And I'm not gonna try and turn this into a full comparison video of the two. If you'd like that, let me know below. But when we come and look quickly at the faces of these two, the two biggest things that you're going to notice is one, the Pro has LEDs on the top and then the full face is black. On the Wise Cam version three, there is a white accent and it is a little shiny. You have no white surface, which is kind of cool. It helps it stay muted and unnoticeable uh, compared to its predecessor. At the top here, as I mentioned, these are two LED spotlights that have a total lumen of 70 and a color temperature of 5,000 Kelvin. So that is going to be kind of more muted. It's not a harsh white or a soft white. Coming down, not noticeable right now, but there are four IR lights, two on either side, that are used for night vision. Coming down further, we have our microphones and then an LED status light. The LED status light is actually kind of important to know about because, well, you can turn that off or if you're utilizing this inside, you might want to keep that on and we'll talk about why later. Talking about our lens here, this is a CMOS image sensor with 2560 by 1440 aspect ratio with eight times digital zoom and a field of view of 116 degrees. It is pretty wide, it does not fisheye, and it does not distort the image, which I very much appreciate. As for frames per second of video from this, you can expect to get 20 FPS during the daytime and 15 FPS at night. Coming around to the back of our device, we have our speaker, Looks very similar to what we had on the version three, which is kind of good. It means it's gonna be a good speaker. It also means, hey, there's a siren in here, so you can use this to scare people off. Sounds like this. Now, here we get to the power port for this. This is not a battery camera. This does require it be plugged in at all times in order to function. This is the big difference on the back compared to the version three in that this is a proprietary plug. It has an arrow on the top. And the reason I say that is because you can kind of see based on the camera and shadowing, this is a very deep channel to plug into. Now, part of the reason that this is done this way is because this is an indoor outdoor camera and can be used outside. My thoughts on this particular setup for the plug, and again, we're gonna do this, compared to the Wisecam version three, this is plugged in. You cannot replace that. If this goes bad, the camera's pretty much useless. However, on the version three, this end had a very large and rubberized covering for the adapter. Makes me feel a little more comfortable keeping this outside. However, I have used this outside and it's been rained on and I've had no issues with it. Speaking of that indoor outdoor factor, you are looking at IP65 weather rating because well, if it doesn't have that, it's not gonna be useful outside for you. 
Coming to our underside, we have a swiveling base that can go 360 degrees around. We can remove this base plate here and then just use a mounting plate as you would with a camera, much as I have right now, uh, to place this somewhere else if we don't want. The base plate here is magnetic, which is why we had that metal disc. So if I throw that there, it's magnetic. It stays in place. We have a little rubberized door for our micro SD card. And you can see kind of the channeling there. It does a good job of keeping water out, but also preventing you from actually losing the door. This camera is the first camera from Wise that officially supports a 128 gigabyte micro SD card. That's supposed to give you 15 days of full 2K resolution if you have the camera constantly recording. So that is a great feature to have. We also have a rubberized setup button which we'll talk about momentarily. And then on the bottom, we have rubberized feet as well as a very articulating camera arm. You will also see right there is the mounting screw hole for some of the hardware accoutrement that we saw earlier. But because we mentioned the setup button on the bottom, let me show you just how simple it is to set up the WiseCam Pro. This will be set up for the Wise Cam Pro. For starters, you will open up your Wise app. If you don't have an account, you will need to download the app and create an account first. After which you come up to the upper left-hand corner here and select the plus sign and then add a device. After which we're going to select cameras because this is a camera. And then here we have the Wise Cam version three Pro. I will select that. And now it is indicating that we should plug in. Here we look in the back, we've got a place to put this and a handy arrow with a line up letting you know that this micro USB port goes in thusly. So you're gonna push that in until you feel it hit home. And then we're gonna look and right there you can see that is a red light. We are going to wait for that red light to start flashing as indicated by the application. There we can see it started flashing red. I also did notice that the LED is on the top did a quick little flash, we're gonna select next, after which we are going to press the pairing button on the bottom of our device, right here. So we push and hold. Ready to connect. Until we hear ready to connect. On the application side, I come back and I select, I've heard ready, ready to, to connect. <laughs> ready to connect and select next. Now it wants me to choose my network ready to connect. that this will connect to. I am just going to select my IoT ready network. Now it shows a QR code, which I need to scan. Ready to connect. QR code scanned, please wait. There we go, you heard QR code scanned, please wait. There's a check mark, checkbox, I say next, and then we wait while it connects. Admittedly, the scanning of the QR code is probably the trickiest part of actually setting up these WISE cameras. If you have a screen protector on, that can affect how the actual connection is, or, depending on lighting and if you've got scratches, it, it, it is the trickier part. I do wish that they came up with a different way of doing that, but I do realize that they kind of tried to do it for the simplicity of just scanning a QR code. However, it doesn't always work, especially with the QR code that takes up the entirety of your screen. Uh, we're just gonna leave this as WiseCam Pro. Continue. All right, so it wants to know why we got this. Security for self-monitoring, professional monitoring, pet monitoring, baby monitoring, or something else. I'm gonna say something else. There we go, we have a 14-day free trial of Cam Plus. Gonna select continue. You can select to share this device, but we can do that later as well. So I'm gonna select maybe later. And then as with all things, there is a firmware update. So we're gonna select update, but after the update that will complete the setup process for the WiseCam Pro. As you saw, not that terrible to set up at all. Let's talk a little bit more about the insides or the brains of this camera. It has an internal CPU of 1.2 gigahertz and one gigabyte of internal memory. Now, part of that is this camera, unlike other Wise cameras, can do on-device processing. So 
when it detects a person, it doesn't have to send that information to the cloud. It does that all on the camera. That means one, you're going to get faster detection as well as faster notifications because it doesn't have to send it out and then receive and then send you a notification. It can process on camera and then send you a notification right away. It also has colored night vision, much like the Wise Cam version 3 had, as well as a lot of the newer cameras that Wise has coming out. This also has that night vision. However, I will say, because of those internal smarts, this camera's night vision does come out crisper than I've tested with other cameras. However, do keep in mind that the colored night vision does require at least a little of ambient light around in order for that to work. When talking about video quality, especially that crisper night vision, I'm gonna throw up on screen now some examples of my version three and the pro here side by side so that you get an idea when I'm talking about crisper night vision, but just the clarity of picture. This is not even zooming in, this is just putting this camera up and comparing it to what I had before. Granted, because of the internals on the Pro, you would expect to have that better picture. You also are getting the Pro because you want that 2K resolution. Now, keep in mind for this video, they are downscaled. You can clearly see the difference in how these images compare to one another. But is image quality the only trick that the Wise Pro has going for it? Well, there are actually some fairly significant changes to the application for the Wise Cam Pro. So let's take a look at that. This is the application for the Wise Cam Pro. You'll note right here, I have the Wise Cam up at the top. You can see it is indicating that it is on. It's also letting me know, hey, I've got some event recordings, and then there's some try things up here. Uh, the Wise app has changed a little bit from past products that I've done. However, this is going to be concentrating on the Wise Cam Pro. To access the Wise Cam Pro, you would simply select your icon, and it brings you into a live feed. And this is live, there is a cat right there, so we're gonna probably see him moving around throughout the review process. Now. The WiseCam Pro drastically changes the user interface compared to other WiseCam products. Gone are having to scrub through a timeline. You can see right here, this is my timeline. These icons all indicate something. So the hand wave means that there was motion. The purple dog means that there's a pet, as you can see right there, and he's running off over there now. And then if I come down this way, you have a person icon letting you know that there's a person. There are other icons, but we'll talk about them when we get to them. If I tap on my live feed here, you can see I have the option for 2K. That's going to be the highest image quality that you can get from this. If I tap on this, I can select 2K, SD, or 360. Notice there is no 1080 listed here. So you're either going to go to a standard def or 360. So there's, there's no real intermediate. So if I lower this and tap on that, you can see it now says SD. Also, we have our live icon here. Right down here, this is our LED indicator. So the LEDs that are on the front of our Wise Cam, if I select this and you see that, it kind of brightened up a little bit and that's why I'm kind of doing this later in the day so it's kind of dark. That indicates that the LED light is on. Tapping it again will turn it off. Right there we have our microphone. If I select the microphone, it is now sending my voice through the microphone. Right next to that there is a audio on and off. So if I toggle this on or off, I can either hear things from the camera or I can select not to hear things. Up in the right hand corner here, there are the four kind of prong box there, that is to have our camera change to the full screen mode. I can go back simply by selecting back. Right here we have our SD card. If you're using a micro SD card with your camera, selecting this will allow you to look through your SD card. Now, notice right here on this particular day, it's showing me, hey, there was a person about here in the timeline. So if I come down to here, it will automatically start scrubbing and you saw the image change. And if I tap there, I can pause, rewind, or fast forward 30 seconds. So if I tap that, it will jump ahead 30 seconds until I find, there we go, there's the person, that's me going to get extra batteries for my camera. But you can see within this time space, there are six events and it's letting us know that. And you can scrub within this time frame. Notice I had the camera off for specific amounts of time. That's why you're gonna look for these green markers to let you know. You can also change your date simply by selecting the back or forward arrows and that will change the date. It will keep you roughly within the time frame. So there, that was a motion event. And if I scrub through this, 
You can see I turned it off, I turned it back on again shortly, and then I was doing it in bursts as I was testing. But you can also select the calendar right here and pick what day you want to go to. I'm gonna select back to bring us back here, and I'm gonna bring us back to today because while we have this, we can take a photo. So if I take a photo, that saves the footage to our album here. I can record what I see on screen and it's recording it directly to the album. I can select stop. And then if I want to access any of these, so it says save to my device, I can select album, which will bring me into the album. And here, these are the saved videos. And then here is my saved photo. For any of these, if I want to delete it, I can select it and select delete down here, or I can share this via however I can share with my phone, or I can select edit select something and then share or delete multiple items. I'm going to delete this one and select OK. And we're gonna go back. From within our SD card timeline, I also have the ability to go to live. Once we go to live, that brings us back to our live video feed. Now you will see that we have similar functionality that we did with our SD card, where we can take a photo, which will take a snapshot of what it's seeing right now. We can record, which will record video of what we're currently watching. This is new for the Wise Cam Pro. This is Smart Focus. Now, when it's green like this, that means that the Smart Focus is turned on, and it has mixed results, personally. Um, it does track a person or object in frame, but it's not 100%. It's not as good as if you had a pan tilt camera with motion tracking, but if you're looking for a single device that can do a lot of things and not have a lot of moving parts, this is a nice feature to have. Notice it says beta, because they're still working on it. But if I tap on that, it will turn off the smart beta feature. Now, if we scroll over, because that's the thing, you'll have to actually drag this over. Based on previous UIs from WISE, it took me a while, so I'm letting you know. You have a siren option there, which will allow you to turn on an audible siren through the camera. We have access to our album. If I select album, just like we saw before, it brings me into my album area. We also have the ability to do time-lapse, which is one of the great things that you can do with your WISE camera. By setting up a time-lapse, you can set a, a start date and time, an end date and time, and then your interval. Once you do that, you simply select set, and the camera will snap photos and at the end create a time-lapse video that you can watch. I've done this with other WISE cameras and it's a really cool feature. And last but not least over here, we have the turn off. So you can turn off your camera, meaning it will not actively be viewing you or making any recordings. This particular function is why I recommend leaving the LED status light on so that you can be aware when the camera's active or not active. Coming down to our recent event area, we have the ability to filter, and here are all of those icons I was talking about. You have motion, sound, person, package, pet, and vehicle. Now, some of these do require the Cam Plus subscription. For testing purposes, I am using a subscription, and I just want you to be aware of that. But it's nice that they give you little visualizations that you can view on the feed here. Now, for this particular event, if I wanted to, I select it, and it will load the event up here, and then here we go. This is my cat walking down the hall. That is both a motion trigger and a pet trigger. If we scroll down, we'll find one where it has people. Here we go. I'll come down to this one. This is both a person and pet event. So there I am, the person walking over to grab a review item. And then there'll probably be a cat wandering into frame. If I click on this, I have the ability to speed up one of these timeline items. So there's the cat. And if I click on this, I can speed him up. So now he's going four times faster. If we rewatch this, you can see I'm moving four times faster as well. And four times is the maximum that you can get when speeding this up, which is a little tricky to do around the camera, but you get the idea. From here with a clip, I can download and I will download it to my device's library. I can share or I can delete. If I'm done with a clip, I can simply select to go live. It will reload the camera and I can scrub through more events as I wish. We also have the ability to select specific days. Notice I can shrink down days. I can show all events and that's gonna show me all of my events for all of my cameras, but it kind of groups your events in a single day. So right now for the particular time frame that I'm testing, I have two days worth of events. Now, you don't have to click on the arrow, you simply select the date itself, and that will open it up. It makes it a little tricky if you're trying to hit that arrow. 
But those are all of the controls that we can do for the WiseCam Pro. If we look up to the top right corner of our screen here, we see a sprocket icon. That's going to bring us into the settings for the WiseCam Pro. We can also see right here that it is indicating that I have a WiseCam subscription right there. So if you didn't, it would have the option there to kind of prompt you to go and get one. We're going to select our sprocket icon right here and check out the settings that we get with the WiseCam Pro. First and foremost, we have the name. We simply select this and we can type in a name or we have a couple of pre-designated ones that we can do. We hit save when we're done. Next, we come down to our detection settings. Here you can set the motion sensitivity from a low to high. We also have the ability to turn on detection zones. Right now I have this off, but if I turn this on, it's going to show me a grid view and it's saying, hey, what, what do you want? So I'm gonna clear it because that little box right there was a preset that I did previously. But let's say I only want this area over here and I just kind of run my finger back and forth and it will fill in the boxes for me. But you can get kind of granular where it's like, hey, maybe this window back here, I want uh, to know what's going on there as well as down here. And you saw if I want to remove something, I simply tap on it again. That does make this part a little tricky if you don't get it done in one shot and hit save. And now we have a detection zone set up and I'm gonna come back. We have motion tagging. So that green box that you saw around myself and my pet, that's the motion tagging, letting you know, hey, this is what I saw and what I'm tracking. And then here we have sound sensitivity. So if you have alert set for your sound, you have a sensitivity scale right there. I'm going to select back and now we're gonna come down to event recordings. Right now I have record motion events and we have the ability for all motion or smart detection events. This is only available if you have a Cam Plus subscription. That's why it has that little eye there. If you tap on that, it will let you know. Person events for additional blah, blah, blah. We have the ability to record sound events. I tend not to because there's not a lot going on in here, but we have smart detection. This is again, only available with Cam Plus. So here you can toggle on person Friendly faces, I don't have that level of cam plus, but if you had it, you could turn that on. Pet vehicle package, this is an inside camera, so I don't have to worry about packages. And then additional sounds, crying, meowing, barking, or talking. This is kind of really cool. So if you have a young child or pets, or hey, maybe there's talking that shouldn't be happening at specific times of the day, this will automatically detect it and then start recording. Coming back, we have our notifications. Notice it has the plus next to it. That is again an indication that I'm using a Cam Plus subscription. I have my notifications currently turned off because I was getting a lot of them while I was testing. But if I turn on my notifications, I can select what I want to be notified about. So in my case, I want person, pet, and vehicle. We also have sounds but we cannot turn that on unless we have sounds enabled. And what this will do is push a notification to your smartphone if it detects any one of those toggled items. Next, we have alarm setting. We have smoke alarm and CO2. Pretty much every smoke alarm or CO2 alarm in the United States has a specific sound. So what this will do if turned on, will listen for a smoke detector sound coming from within your house and send you an alert if you happen to have these turned on. Coming down, we have spotlight settings. You have the ability to have low or high. Right now, I have it on high. You have control spotlight, which high is best for outdoor, low they say for indoor. Coming down, spotlight controls, we have auto, and then it says light will be turned on when it's dark, and dark is subjective, it figures it out for itself, or you can turn it off completely. Next, you have when will it turn it on? So in this case, I have when motion is detected, turn on the LED light. You also have the ability to, if sound is detected, to turn on that LED. Timer, how long will that light stay on after it has been triggered? You can set it for as low as 15 seconds and go up to 15 minutes. Generally, I leave it on one or 30, depending on where I have it set up. And then we can schedule. You can set up a schedule as to when the spotlight gets triggered and when it should be ignored. Selecting back, we have our advanced settings. So right now I have a micro SD card in my camera. So here we have record to micro SD enabled. And do we want continuous or events only? I have continuous and that's how I had that long line of uh, items that I could look through. 
you have manage micro SD card. Selecting this, you pretty much can see how much of the micro SD card is used and then format, meaning wipe everything on the micro SD card or eject the micro SD card. We're gonna select back. Next, we come down to night vision. We have auto on or off. Right now I have it set for auto. And then when does that happen? So night vision, the night vision condition for me, I have it set to dark, but you can set it for dusk, meaning, hey, if it's low light, not complete pitch black, turn those on for me. Then we have our night vision IR lights. You can toggle this on or off. Notice there's a little eye icon right there. And it says, recommend that you turn off your IR lights if you have the camera facing a window because you don't wanna have that reflection. I really appreciate the fact that WISE allows you to turn on and off the IR lights because there's not a lot of cameras that have that function, especially since WISE kinda very good to put up against a window if you don't wanna put the camera itself outside. Camera status light, as I mentioned before, this is a good thing to keep on, especially if you're going to use that on off button for the camera for its recording mode. Here we have rotate image 180 degrees. I have that off because well, it's not upside down. But if you had the camera in an upside down position, you can turn that particular function on and the image on your phone would look correct. Next we have show timestamp, show logo, and then record sound. These three all are part of the recorded video. If you don't want a timestamp as part of your video, which I strongly recommend keeping in, uh, you can toggle that on or off. Show the WISE logo right here. I can understand not wanting to have that in there, but if you did, toggle it on like I have. If you don't, toggle it off. Record sound, depending on where you might be, you might not be able to record sound with video. Believe it or not, there are some laws against that. If you need to do video recording without sound, simply toggle that off. Next, you have sync time. Simply selecting that will sync the time to your local time. Coming down, we have rules, which will allow you to set up specific triggers and actions that can happen for your camera or otherwise devices based on actions that happen with the camera. Such as, hey, if a person is detected in this room, maybe turn on this wise plug over here so they can see what's going on. Next, you have sharing. Selecting this, you can share with a new user. Keep in mind that if you share this camera with somebody, they will need to have their own WISE account in order for you to be able to share. Device info, just like it sounds, is going to give you information about your device. That's going to be firmware, MAC address, serial number, all that can be found here. WISE support, if you need help for your device, you can select this option right here and be brought to WISE support. So you have help center, begin troubleshooting, and submit logs. So it's nice that that's built in and easily accessible for you should you need to provide that to WISE. Right here, you can delete this device. So if you're passing the device off to somebody else like I might be doing, you can delete the device from your account and pass it off and it'll be no longer associated with your WISE account. And we're going to select back because that is everything that we can do within the WISE Cam Pro interface. If we back one more time, I'm going to quickly touch on overall areas of our WISE App. So we were on our home, that's how we accessed the camera. We have events. Keep in mind, if you have multiple cameras, it's going to bring all of them into one place. Uh, you can filter for a specific camera if you want, simply by selecting that, and I can select which one I want. We have monitoring. I don't have monitoring, so I don't use that, but if you have wise monitoring, that's how you access those features. You have shopping, just like it might sound. They're pushing the shopping. They have it right there. And then your account info, that's going to be where you can click to see how your Cam Plus subscriptions are doing. You can see your account information, your homes if you have several, your services, so this is how you can manage your Wise Cam subscriptions. Security, if you have one of those, sharing, notifications, firmware, this is where it groups all of that stuff together. So if you wanna do multiple things for many cameras, check your account rather than going directly into the camera. But this has been the WISE application for the WISE Cam Pro. As you saw, WISE made some significant changes to the application just for the WISE Cam Pro here. One thing that I always like to test with an electronic device is power consumption. Because, well, stated power consumption doesn't mean actual usage data. So for me, what I did, I tested this out just idly, meaning it's plugged in, nobody's viewing it. It will use 1.9 watts of power. If the IR lights are on and it's in night vision mode, it uses two watts of power. And if the LED is on, it uses 2.3 watts of power. 
considering all of that onboard processing that's happening, those power consumption numbers are ridiculously low. And WISE has always been good about keeping their power consumption for their devices low, which I always appreciate. While I might have showed you a side-by-side -side sampling of the WiseCam Pro versus the WiseCam version 3, as I mentioned, those were downscaled for this 1080 video. So in the corner over there, you can check out actual raw footage in 2K from this camera, both indoor, outdoor, day, night, several different lighting conditions. So if you're interested in seeing that, please check out that video over there in the corner. Just having good visuals though, does nothing if you're getting this for audio as well. So obviously you're gonna to wanna to know how this sounds. So let's take a listen to the audio quality from the Wise Cam Pro. Audio test, Wise Cam Pro. Sally sells seashells by the seashore. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Test one, test two, test three, and test. Again, audio quality for something of this size is actually very good. One other thing to consider is, well, does this work with Alexa and Google Home if you want to view these on those particular smart devices? And yes, if you have one of those smart devices with a screen, you can view the live feed from the WiseCam Pro. If you think I'm just going to sing the praise of the WiseCam Pro here, and it's all sunshines and rainbows, you would be wrong. There are two very distinct issues that I found with this camera. First being Cam Plus Lite. Again, review over there in the corner if you need to know what that is. This camera does not allow you to use Cam Plus Lite. So if you want to have person detection, pet detection, package detection, you need to have a Cam Plus subscription. It cannot be the light. You can have one of the two higher tiers, but you cannot have the name your own price subscription for this. And I get that. There's a lot going on inside of here. If you want to have access to that, you have to pay a little bit. I can understand that. The second issue that I found with this though is connectivity. And I know that's going to sound odd, but let me explain. When I run my tests, generally I run my cameras in similar places all the time. I have one of two places. I have one that's about 10 feet away from my Wi-Fi access point, and then when I'm testing outside, the other is about 56 feet away from my Wi-Fi access point. This camera, when placed where I do all of my other tests, including the one for the WiseCam version 3, had some problems. Now, I was able to determine what that was that was causing it, at least in my instance. And I'm gonna say, the firmware on this is currently up to date, so I don't know if others out there are having this experience as well, but if the LED lights come on, the Wi-Fi connectivity, if at the 2K resolution, gets choppy. The further out it is, the worse it gets. When I had this outside at my 56 foot testing point, it got really bad. And if you checked out the sample video, you might notice stuttering in the video because that was this dropping connection and reconnecting while it was recording. Inside, it was not as bad, but it only seems to happen if the LED lights are on. Now, if this is something that you're getting this camera for, the built-in LEDs, that could be something to give you pause. Otherwise, it's a very solid camera from WISE, but if you're looking to save money, the WiseCam version 3 has an attachment that goes on the outside that can give you those LED lights. You would just have to put up with 1080 video as opposed to 2K. If you don't mind not using the LED lights, then you'll be fine. I'm trying to determine if it's somewhere in where the Wi-Fi antenna is in correlation to those LED lights that's causing my issue. Again, if you've experienced this as well, let me know down in the comment section below. I, I really want to know because this is one of the first definitive issues that I've had with a wise cam. If you can look past those shortcomings for the price of this camera, it is still a very solid buy if you're getting into the wise ecosystem. If you're looking to upgrade from a wise cam version three, consider those two issues that I ran into if it's worth the upgrade for you, because realistically, you would be doing it for that 2K resolution. If you want that, that's perfectly fine. I just want you to be aware of all the facts before going in and making that type of decision. Even with those shortcomings, I can still recommend the WiseCam 
Pro with those few criticisms. With that being said, I have been Wanderer001. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the area below. And as always, thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, consider giving it a like as that will help other people find the video as well. If you like what I'm doing here, you can always help fuel the next review by buying me a coffee. Link in the description below. Last but not least, if you want to be notified when I upload a new video, you know what to do.